Oh, 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 right, right, the review, the review, good then, over time. You know what I think about sacrifice. Now, if there is another thing that really puts me off, it's the no one left behind mentality. And I don't mean in the sense of not wanting anyone to die. I mean that more often than not, that comes to include people who, for all intents and purposes, would be better off dead, people that have done nothing but being a pain in the arse. If you add that trying to save them can also be detrimental to the hero, now I'm not saying that heroes should have been trying to redeem people, but there is a line, a line that once crossed turns a person full retard. Thankfully no one in game has crossed that line yet, right? After Mitsuzane kicked their butt and kidnapped Mai and Peko almost died, Kota decides fuck in the season. Ryoma wants to give them a way in, then they'll take that way in, but he still has hope to save Mitsuzane. After Kaito states once again the obvious, which is becoming a real bother now, he takes the idea of Kota just wanting to rush in and turns it into a useful distraction. He makes noise, attracts the invest, Kaito goes in and saves Mai. And of course, since this is probably the final battle, one by one the other riders decide to follow the plan and fight, except for Miss Minato who for some reason isn't even in the scene. That's weird. Switch scene, our crazy suit is all smiles. Only creepy fuck would the hell change mine into those clothes and reassuring that he only wants mine to be by his side. The please to go back to what he was before go right over his head of course. But he doesn't mind my not understanding the goodwill and perfect logic behind his actions, she will with time, only for Ghost Takatora to appear and say yeah dream on you little bitch. Three guesses as to how Mai reacts to the following ethereal conversation and then we're back to the heroes. They're following Ryoma to the secret entrance, now unguarded since the SDF has their own invest to deal with. Then follows the awful realization that it wasn't Redu who sent those missiles at America but an even more powerful overlord, otherwise why bother with stupid schemes with all that raw power at your disposal? We go back to Mitsuzane, who upon seeing that Rat and Rick are now also sources of energy for the Linium Queen, just shrugs his shoulders and goes, meh, should have listened to me. The Green Bishopette compliments him on his newfound strength and resolve, but chides him on letting Kota go. If there is one thing that hasn't changed from before he turned evil, is that Mitsuzane still underestimates Kota. She suggests using Mai as bait for a trap, but Mitsuzane vehemently refuses. A change of scene, we get Oren Journal Uchi driving shenanigans and then the convoy gets attacked by Mbass. Which means it's time for a rider team up! And more antics by Ryoma, who I must say is quite an enjoyable villain on free of the confines of a laboratory. Then, as tradition is with the trips to the final battle, they start leaving people behind. The first ones are Oren and Jonouchi. Now, you know that I'm really picky about sacrifices, but they don't seem to be about to go that way, so I can't stand this. Change of scene, the White King is lamenting how the resurrection is taking longer than for Scene. Enter Mai and Mitsuzane, since Dark Suit has been given the task of ruling humanity, he brought her to Roshu so that he could see the only human worth saving in the entire world, according to him. Which of course means that Mitsuzane wants to leave Mai with him, ok, he's more trustful than Radio, but did you just say that if he wants to kill her he can just go ahead and do so? Costa Katora is right about you! Back to the good guys plus one mad scientist, they reach the secret entrance. Kota proposes waiting for Janouchi and Doran. Ryoma states that, for all they know, they could be dead, so kinda useless to wait. This of course causes Kota to flip off the handle, only for Kato to stop him and suck one to the professor himself. Well, what do you know? You do care, Kaito! About Oren and Janouchi? Or, or maybe about. Kota's feelings? Oh my god, this is so confusing! 
Scene change again, well it's more well paced than in other episodes, so it doesn't really bother me. Roshua wonders what makes Mai so sure that their friends are coming to save her. Mitsuzane was her friend too and look at him! And what is Mai's answer to this? That just because someone betrayed you, it doesn't mean you shouldn't trust them! That's right, not only does Mai still hope for Mitsuzane's redemption, she actually still trusts him! While I agree that just because someone betrays you once, you shouldn't just give up on anyone else, I sure as hell wouldn't trust that specific person who betrayed me anymore! Jesus Christ, what is wrong with these people?! And no, my, the castle is not empty and lonely because it doesn't trust people anymore, it's empty and lonely because the whole fucking race has gone extinct! There's no one left to trust or mistrust! Thankfully, that stupid conversation gets cut off. Our rescue team is going to Ryoma's secret passage when suddenly secret assist. <laughs> Ryoma, you installed a security system that doesn't recognize you in your own fucking secret escape tunnel? Why the hell would you do that? <sighs> Few more people remain behind. This time it's Zack, Minato and Kaito leaving only Kota and Ryoma to proceed forward. Which is bullshit! They are just three jumping tulips and two other melons. Get Kota into the triumphant arms and this would only take five minutes! But no, Kota and Ryoma gone while they stay behind. And even worse, Kato gives Zack a watermelon oxide, which means this whole thing could have taken even less. There's no fucking reason why they had to split up! Except that it seems like the security system is a convenient never-ending supply of enemies! Come the fuck on! Is this really the best way you could think of to get Kota and Ryoma alone? And only to make them have a conversation on trust the mirrors, mice and rush was? Fuck them, Nate. I kind of agree with part of what Ryoma says. Why you shouldn't abandon them? You do put way too much value in other people, Kota! But they arrive at the seal tower, so their battle is cut short. Also, Red you can use Elheim Fruit as an alarm system. Hence, the first thing they find once inside the tower is the Emerald Rook waiting for them. Also, apparently the Genesis Driver can indeed make you as powerful as an Overlord and more. Mitsuzane unlocked that potential through sheer insanity, I guess. Ryoma is a cheat since he designed that thing. In the end though, he lets Kota finish off the Turtle Overlord, wanting to acquire more data on the Zenith Arms. In a very creepy way. And the episode ends with him declaring that he wants to see more. After taking Kota through his secret passage and... Riders of the world, do we really always need a no one left behind mentality that makes no sense at all in fiction? Every now and then, I would like to see someone with that conviction who's also a bit more mentally flexible. I could accept Mai and Kota not wanting to leave Mitsuzane behind, even if the continuous reminder of it is grating on my nerves terribly. We get it, no need to constantly rub it in in our faces. What I really can't accept is what Mai said about trust, and I sure hope to God that Kota doesn't share that opinion. I can understand really not wanting to give up on a dear friend, but still trusting him after everything that is done? He's killed his brother, he's been trying to kill Kota for weeks, he's betrayed humanity, kidnapped Mai, almost killed Peko, he speaks with his ghost brother, if you want to still believe in his redemption, fine. But if you trust him, which is not required for redemption after all that is done, I'm sorry to say that you deserve everything that comes your way, you stupid... Mm. Don't do this to me, Gaim! This wasn't the only fallacy in the writing of this episode, we then had the left behind allies thing. Oren and Jonouchi did make sense, there were lots of invests all ruled in by the only thing making a sound in that wasteland, yes, that would have lost them time. But the convoluted, stupid way to leave Kaito and the rest behind in the passage, an alarm system that doesn't recognize its creator and just so happens to have an infinite supply of fully automated tulips and watermelons? Please guys, you're showing more cracks the more we approach the end of this series. For the love of Ishinomori, don't make this end stupid! And with that, it's the end of today's review, brother fans. What do you think? Am I being too hard on this episode or do you share my opinion? Let me know in the comments or on one of my social media accounts. I'm on Twitter and Facebook, so come on and join the other fans. Jane! Ah, also subscribe, that's really important.